Rob, many congratulations. How do you sum up that victory? Uh, well, I played well, actually. I played well in the first session, which was the most pleasing thing. You know, I put a lot of pressure on Neil to start off with, and it probably carried me on through the rest of the match. Um, it was looking a bit dodgy when he got back to 6-5. It was a couple of real slow frames. I was getting a bit... Um, I, weren't, I was getting a bit slow myself, you know, like in the balls and that. I was taking too much time. And then I nicked a frame. Oh, I can't remember what happened, but I, I, all of a sudden I, I got a bit spurred on and, and started playing quite fluent again. And, and that's what happened till the end of the match. I, you know, I've seen it out quite well. Because before, I think you had to fight back to beat him here, didn't you? Yeah, I was always behind. 5-2 um, and then got back to 5-4, 1-2. Uh, real bad frames against him. And... And then I went six five and it was seven seven. You know that's that's a long that's another story. You know, so, but yeah, it was a different game. This one I was a bit more. Um, I played a bit better. I scored a bit better and um, put a bit more pressure on him. He he gave you full praise and didn't want to detract from your performance. But he said he'd had to change his tip um, before the match. Did you sense that out there? No, I didn't. I didn't know. Somebody else just told me that. Um, w was it before the first day? Yeah, it's not great preparation for anyone, you know, it's very difficult and he, he missed a few more balls than I would expect him to, um, but I put that down to me putting pressure on him, not, not, I didn't know obviously his tip, but yeah, it's terrible if you've got to change your tip just before. The sixth top seed that's gone out, I suppose we're seeing the benefits of you guys that have come through three gruelling matches in qualifying, aren't we? Yeah, so, you know, we've, we've all had uh, match practice, we're all pretty sharp or we should be and for me personally I, I gradually got better every match I've played I, I won't I didn't play great the first match even though I won comfortably and then the second match I dug in and won that 10 eight against a good player Scott Donaldson and then I was seven and up against Holt and sort of just edged over the line against him and now I play better I play better here than I have done in those three games so you know I'm I'm in good stead for the next match against Mark. Yeah, Mark Williams next, another former world champion. Yeah, it's going to be really tough. Mark's playing. Like everyone knows how well Mark's playing. Um, you know, it's, he's hard to um, he's hard to fluster. You know, he's um, he's it's going to be a difficult game. But you know, I'm confident now, so hopefully I can um, put in an half decent performance and see see where it gets me. Do you see yourself as the underdog going into that match, or do you say, "Well, I've just knocked out Neil Robertson, confidence is high, just go for it"? Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm a realist, and I will be the underdog. But at the same time, I got confidence in my ability. You know, I, I haven't shown it enough on the big stage, and I know what I can play like in practice. Um, so if I can put all that into the match game, you know, I, I, I could. There's no, I don't see what no reason why I can't win. What would it mean though for you to get past him and have a good run here? Well, I'm, I, you know, when the draw came out, I was in such a tough, tough hour for the draw. And Neil to play potentially, Mark to play potentially, Ronnie. Uh, everyone knows my record against Ronnie. Uh, that's a different day. <laughs> let's, let, you know, let's play uh, Mark first and see how we get on against him. We wish you all the best. Thank you. Just a bit of what sort of developing what you said about the sort of qualifiers. I think Neil was the fifth former world champion to sort of go out in the first round. Is that? It, it, it doesn't seem to be sort of fear from the people slightly below for, the, for these guys. Yeah, well, I think it's a bit of both, really. I mean, like, it, we're, we're used to playing these players a bit more now. We've got so many tournaments. Um, and I've played Neil loads of times. You know, I beat him this year already, so I didn't really have any fear against Neil. Although I know how great Neil is as a player. I didn't really have a lot of fear against him. It's more a fear of myself not knowing what to expect, whether I'm going to play well or, or I'm going to struggle, you know. But these guys have also got to be with Neil, some Stuart Bingham, Graham Dotting, Sean Murphy and Mark Selby. Is, it, it, is Ronnie the only one out there that people genuinely maybe do still fear out of all these other big names? I, I can only speak for myself and I fear Ronnie, you know, and that was the first thing I looked at when the draw came out was not so much anyone else, but which half see him first of all, you yeah. know, and... and um, I think everyone, like everyone knows that they can beat Ronnie. Yeah. I know I can beat Ronnie, but can I do it out there? I, you know, I know my game's good enough, but it's it's a lot different out there. And to do it over that amount of frames, it's going to be very tough for anyone to beat him. Right. So for 
to a view personally, maybe he, he, he has got a fear factor above all these other great champions. Definitely he has, yeah. Yeah. But but I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Yeah, we had this argument on Twitter, um, not argument, but a discussion. Somebody saying somebody who's beat him a couple of times this year, uh, yeah, saying uh, I'd love to play Ronnie. Well, I don't look at that. I want to. I want to stay in the tournament as long as I can. And if I do play him, I want to play him in the quarterfinals, not first round. Rob, can I just ask you about Mark Williams? You mentioned he's playing well. Um, he's quite a revival actually this season, hasn't he? You've known him a long time. What yeah. have you made of what he's achieved this season? That's fantastic. I mean, it, like, he's always been a great, great player. That's there's no doubt about that. Um, so he's been to sight right, and he's obviously he's put another like he's put boosted him with more confidence. I don't know what he's doing, but Mark's happy with it, and um, yeah, he's a great player. He's, he's, it's tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah. Do you remember what happened to you in 2005? He beat you here in the first round. Uh, yeah. One. Sorry to remind you. No, that's right. You got 147. Yeah. Um, in that final frame. What's your yeah, memories well, that, of that? Well, my memories of that was I was 8-1 down against him and I could have been 8-1 up. It was such a bad game. We both missed everything. And in the end, I thought, do you know what? I, I, said, to, I said to someone at the time, I said, it would be nice just to go out there and get the balls get the balls open and try and have a go for because it, it was 167 grand then and uh, he done it didn't he and he, he didn't even give me the eye break prize of 20 grand he, you know he, but yeah it weren't a great game I, I could have I could have easily been the same I could have been 7-2 up and I was 8-1 down it was just a crazy game so how hopeful are you that we a lot closer this time um yeah I, I don't want to be going out there and getting drummed you know and, and there's no there's no worse feeling than, you know, five one, six one, seven one, and I don't think I will because I, I, I'm playing all right, and I proved to Mark that I can beat him. I beat him in Cardiff in the in the Welsh a few years back, and then I beat him a couple of times in the Champion Champions League. And I, Mark knows I can, you know, I can play all right. So, uh, you know, hopefully it'll be a good game, and um, I'll be in thirty now. <laughs> <laughs> Betfred, proud sponsor of the World Snooker Championship.